thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar as we talk about the benefits of peer support and to ensure that no one feels alone and continues to thrive living with limb loss and limb difference. This webinar will highlight the Amputee Coalition's peer support programs and increase participant awareness of peer support. By the end of this webinar, we hope that you'll be able to identify and discuss the peer, peer support programs offered by the Amputee Coalition, describe the benefits of peer support, and explore the role of peer support and increase awareness of available or needed programs within your local communities. At the heart of the Amputee Coalition's mission is our peer support programs. We believe that support comes in many forms and can make an incredible difference in recovery and rehabilitation. The coalition offers peer support in the form of support groups, healthcare partnership programs, youth camp, and our certified peer visitor program. Every summer, we offer a traditional summer camp experience for children ages 10 through 17, living with limb loss, limb difference. Our summer camp is full of activities such as fishing, swimming, canoes, ropes courses, and of course, campfires and sing-alongs. Our campers often say that this is the one place that they get to feel normal. We also offer a leadership camp experience for youth ages eight, 18 and 19. That focuses on transitional life skills as such as career path, health and wellness, community living, and advocacy. Our counselors are also living with limb loss, limb difference, and are able to serve as role models for the youth attending. The Amputee Coalition's Patty Rossback Youth Camp is free of charge to all attendees, including airfare. We're excited to reunite with our campers and counselors in person this July at a new location in Greenville, Tennessee. Camp registration is open now and will close this Sunday, May 1st. Be sure to spread the word or sign up to volunteer as a camp counselor before the deadline. The, the coalition's national support group network has registered groups throughout the country that meet in person, virtually, or offer hybrid group meetings. Anyone looking for support can search our website or community connections for active groups within their area or contact our National Limb Loss Resource Center for more information. We also help individuals start and maintain support groups. Being a part of our support group network comes with many great benefits, such as receiving outreach materials at no cost, advertising the group's meetings on the coalition's website, inclusion of our support group network on our website so individuals looking for support can locate your group, support group leaders can join quarterly support group leader networking calls, virtual engagements and attend the Amputee Coalition's Volunteer Summit. The opportunity to host a CPV training if a support group is affiliated with the current healthcare facility partner of the Amputee Coalition. We currently also offer five virtual support groups through the Amputee Coalition. Our healthcare partnership opportunity is open to hospitals and rehabilitation facilities interested in implementing the Certified Peer Visitor Program to support their patients facing amputation, as well as throughout the recovery process. Healthcare partnerships are an excellent way for facilities to share the coalition's expertise and to distribute valuable educational materials to their patients. These educational materials include our publications, like First Step, a guide to adapting to limb loss, our bi-monthly magazine in motion, and an amputation level specific uh, booklet. These and other materials are also available to order from, from our Amputee Coalition store, which is tabbed on our website, amputee-coalition.org. Other amazing benefits of becoming a healthcare facility partner include receiving an initial fulfillment package of our educational materials free of charge, with complimentary reorder requests as needed, discounts on registrations to the Amputee Coalition events, and the opportunity to host a certified peer visitor training at your facility. If you're interested in partnering with the Amputee Coalition, please connect 
with partners at amputee-coalition.org. Our growing network of healthcare facility partners see the value in the Certified Peer Visitor Program as a powerful extension of the care and support they provide to patients and their families. The inherently people look for ways to provide support to others facing similar experiences. In 1993, the Amputee Coalition launched a peer visitor training program to help individuals acquire and practice the skills necessary to provide peer support. Our experienced, well-trained, certified peer visitors can offer encouragement and information to help guide individuals through the recovery process and support them in establishing their new normal. Who would be in a better place to understand about living with limb loss, limb difference than someone who's been there? An experienced, well-trained, certified peer visitor can support from a place and at a pace that can be extremely beneficial to someone new to this journey or facing amputation. Our certified peer visitors go through certification training and must meet our CPV criteria to be eligible to conduct peer visits on behalf of the Amputee Coalition. Most, ind most individuals participate in the civilian-based training certification program. Our military and veteran certification is delivered through a partnership with the VA's Amputee System of Care, as well as with the DOD. Our youth and family certification provides training for junior or young adults, as well as their parents who can provide much needed support for families and youth who are facing limb loss, limb difference. Through our trainings, our certified peer visitors learn how to provide trainings um, in a variety of settings, in person, phone calls, um, through the app, video chat, or through partnerships with our healthcare facilities. This is the core of the CPV training, our CPV mantra. The peer visit is not about me, it is about the person I am visiting. This statement is repeated many times throughout the class. Living by this mantra ensures that an individual receives the benefits that peer support has to offer by ensuring that the focus of the peer visit is on the individual requesting support. Peer support is built on shared experience and empathy. It focuses on an individual's strengths and works towards the individual's well being and recovery. Knowing when to reach out and ask for help is the first step in taking advantage of all that peer support has to offer. The Amputee Coalition Support app is free and was designed for those living with limb loss, limb difference, and caregivers. The app embodies the power of connection to peer support and valuable resources. It is HIPAA compliant and is available for free download via the Apple App Store, Google Play, and through a web browser. You can take a screenshot of the QR codes to, um, be, to help you navigate to where you can download the app for free. Here are some key takeaways. The Amputee Coalition offers a variety of resources and peer support programs. The peer, peer support offers a connection with people who understand you and know what you have experienced. Often, peer support is referred to as the best medicine. When someone is new to limb loss or limb, when someone is new to limb loss or living with limb difference or facing an amputation. Knowing when to ask for help is the first step in taking advantage of all peer support has to offer. The Amputee Coalition is here to make sure that no individual goes through this journey alone. We're here to help local communities, hospitals, health, healthcare facilities, and support groups raise awareness of the need for strong peer support programs. Would you like to become a certified peer visitor or would you like to request a peer visit? Please visit our website to get more information or email the peer support department at peer support at, at amputee-coalition.org. You can also reach out to us by phone at 888-267-5669. Peer visit request forms and CPV training applications are available online. Interest in learning about the Amputee Coalition Support app? 
free download through the Apple App Store or Google Play. Or if you're interested in becoming a healthcare facility partner, please visit our website to get more information or email partners at amputee-coalition.org. We're gonna move into a question and answer session now. If you have questions, please feel free to use the uh, question and answer or the chat box. And Priya, I do see that we have a few of our volunteer certified peer visitors and possibly some support group leaders joining us today. Um, so I may call upon a couple people on the spot just to share their perspective as one of our vol volunteers within our certified peer visitor program. Um, while there are some questions that we can um, ensure that the attendees who are not part of our volunteer program yet can actually speak to some of the certified peer visitors joining the call today. Um, Herb Kolodny from Connecticut, I'm gonna call you out. Could you share a bit of your um, experience <clears throat> of the value that being a volunteer and paying it forward to other people throughout their limb loss and limb difference journey has had an impact on your recovery and journey? All right, I was wondering how I was gonna to get to be unmuted. Thank you very much. Oh, now I get to turn on the video. I you don't have a video button. We can see your picture. You're okay to just answer and hear your story. No worries. Well, I became the accidental peer visitor way, 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 way back. I've been an amputee for nine years and not through the amputee coalition, but through the rehab hospital that I went to. They asked me to be a peer visitor for uh, another new amputee who was really down in the dumps. And at the time, I had absolutely no intention of being a peer visitor. I didn't even know what one was. I was only interested in advocating for myself to get back on my own feet. And it was such an amazing experience because two amputees got changed that day. Uh, thankfully, I didn't have to know much. They would just answer their questions, including the family members and the amputee. But it really changed me because it just felt incredibly good to be able to help somebody else. So this person who was down in the dumps was able to see light at the end of the tunnel and know it wasn't an oncoming train and agreed to uh, rehabilitation. Uh, to actually become an inpatient, and he went on. Uh, so that definitely motivated me, though, to do more peer visits and to learn about the Certified Peer Visitor Program. Um, it was in uh, Louisville, Louisville, that's the way they pronounce it, um, that I received Certified Peer Visitor Training. And, um, of course, much better educated so I could be more effective. Thank you so much, Herb. Really appreciate you sharing. I have one more um, certified peer visitor I'd like to call out on relating to um, when is peer support important or um, utilized within our volunteer community. And I'm going to call David Paschold um, to talk about are you typically seeing um, requests for peer visits after the amputation or have you started to see a shift in people reaching out if they know that they're having a scheduled amputation or they are having underlying health conditions or risk factors for an amputation? Are you seeing both sides of peer visits happening before the amputation and after? Well, that's, that's a long question. So I will, uh, I'll try to re respond. The peer visits that I've been on include both people that have had an amputation recently or are considering a, an amputation or have been told that they are gonna have an amputation. I've uh, been a participant at a support group session or sessions networking at Madonna here in Lincoln, Nebraska since uh, it started back in, oh, I wanna say the mid, mid uh, teens of 2015 or so and the veteran amputees that attend I 
will uh, will agree, or I think they will agree to say that you're an amputee forever and uh, mentally you need to make sure that you're uh, facing all of the challenges that come your way. And as you age, why there are a lot of challenges that, that change. And so it's, it's really a, as much being a new amputee versus being a, a veteran amputee that, that the support is there. I, I hope that answers your question. That was Nicole. perfect. Thank you, David. And I think there, there's also times that we've had to um, support our volunteer CPVs who maybe they initially became a volunteer through the coalition and they had a below knee amputation. And over the course of their um, recovery and, and journey as a volunteer, they've had to have um, secondary amputations. And so we've done our very best, not to just to support the community members who reach out to us to connect with the peer visitors, but our peer visitors getting the support that they need if sudden changes take place or as they get older, there's more complications. So we want to make sure that we're supporting everybody with peer support, both individual peer support, the caregiver support, and also through our support group um, network. And there are, um, Priya, there are a couple questions in the chat um, or in the Q&A. Um, and I know that you can help answer this as you're leading the charge of our um, certified peer visitor program. Ray Arpin has asked, when will we be doing training? Million dollar question, but we have an answer. Definitely. Hi, Ray. Um, thank you so much for your question. Um, we are really excited to say that we are offering virtual trainings for the Certified Peer Visitor Civilian Program right now. Um, the trainings are going to happen bi-monthly. The next one will be taking place at the end of May. Uh, we are working through our list of people that have applied um, in the last two and a half years. Um, so we're hoping to um, reach out to individuals that are on that list. If you would like to be part of the notification um, and priority list, you can go to the website amputee-coalition.org and complete the application that's online. Thank you, Priya. And then Sonia um, Shorty Hill has a question about youth camp and I can help answer that question, which is when will applicants for the youth camp be notified of next steps after applying for a mentorship role? Um, we are working to, I think, close out the registration officially on May the 1st and that will have the inclusion of our youth camp campers ages 10 through 17, the leadership campers ages eight, 18 and 19, and then our camp counselors, um, ages 18 and older. So as soon as we can officially close registration for all of the types of applications through that um, registration form, we will be reviewing the applications with our youth advisory committee, and we'll be in touch as soon as possible with those who have been accepted from being either a camper, a leadership and training um, camper, or the camp counselor. And then Phyllis has a um, question or statement. Um, she says she's an above knee amputee for 51 years, lo losing her leg when you were 13 years old. Um, you've always worn a prosthesis and have re remained very active. You work um, most of your adult life and have raised a family. That's amazing. So now that you're 65 years old, you're experiencing more difficulty with an active lifestyle because of the aging process. Your joints hurt and your back hurts. What education or peer support is available to help long-term amputees better navigate equipment, stay active and healthy? I am gonna pose that to our certified peer visitors. Um, I think that both Herb and David would be valuable if we can open both of them up. Um, but from an amputee coalition standpoint, after they speak, we can provide you with some valuable resources and takeaways. And if they're not available, I'm certainly happy to step in. <laughs> okay, so Phyllis, I would suggest if you have not gone back to physical therapy or have found a way to get involved in adaptive sports activities, I think the more that you move um, and have the connection with your prosthesis and going back and addressing those issues, I think finding a way throughout your entire life to maintain a medical care support system is gonna be invaluable. 
Um, but I do know through our community connections, if you type in your um, zip code in our searchable database, which can be found on our website under the National Limb Loss Resource Center, you can actually find um, by searching um, adaptive sports and um, pain and physical therapy, a variety of local, state, and national resources that can help you um, learn more, get connected to the healthcare professionals in your local area. But we also have some um, archived webinars around adaptive sports, physical therapy, and even yoga. Um, so please reach out to us um, after the webinar and we'll be sure to send you an email through our information and referral specialist who can share a variety of resources and connections uh, within your local area. And David. Nicole, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, Herb. <clears throat> okay, so um, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the name of the person who asked the question, but um, I figured out you're in your 60s. I'm 74. Um, I started much later than you as far as being an amputee. But what I've had to do on an ongoing basis is visit uh, physical therapy and the gym. Uh, those are the things that keep me going as far as my mobility and my ability to maintain for me what I consider an active lifestyle. Um, and I say both of them uh, because PT will concentrate on all the exercises that will help you maintain strength on your residual limb side. And uh, the gym and any fitness coaches there will worry about the rest of you. And those two have really been able to keep me going and keep me as much as possible maintained. And yes, the pandemic has been difficult to overcome. Um, it's a matter of extra discipline. And I don't say it's easy, but one has to just persevere. And I hope my answer helps you. Thank you so much, Herb. David, you're on again. Thank All you. right, thank you. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. I, uh, but with that said, why I've been an amputee since 1980 had a second surgery in 2006 that uh, I was a Symes and then uh, became a BK below the knee in 2006. I had uh, hip replacement surgery a year ago last November. So joint maintenance is tough. I'd say stay in touch with your surgeon or a surgeon that can help you through some of those tough times. I'll be 72 this summer, so um, it's been it's been a journey, and and like I said before, your body keeps changing as you age, so it's it's a constant uh, process, kind of like what Herb said, you you never stop learning, and uh, you never really stop needing support, if you're wise enough to say that you need support. Needing support is not an indication of weakness by any means. And I, we've, we have uh, peer support sessions that that's come out a lot across the country is uh, some people as well as some surgeons see an amputation as a failure. It's not a failure, it's just a change in life. And being able, as well as uh, physical therapists also have challenges to say that they are willing or not willing to help amputees out. So uh, number one is find, find ways to stay physically fit, like Herb said, and, and then uh, find surgeons and physical therapists that are willing to work with you and, and realize that the amputation is not a failure, just a change in life. It's a really good point. Thank you both. Herb and David, I hate to call you on the spot, but you all are really providing some helpful, insightful, relatable experiences. So thank you. Um, two general questions um, that I want to pose to Priya um, relating to people that have submitted a training application and have either been on the wait list and are waiting to hear back or they um, just submitted an application. What is the typical time frame while we're in beta of the virtual trainings and we are excited to be planning for relaunching in-person certified peer visitor trainings at our national conference taking place in August. 
can you just provide a general summary of when people will start to hear back if they are um, applying for a virtual training class or if they're submitting a training application in anticipation for a future in-person training? Sure. Um, if you have submitted an application already, you are on our priority list. We had this list, we had this list started um, at the very beginnings of the pandemic. Um, and so we're currently working through this list to notify all individuals of the upcoming virtual training sessions. Um, just be sure to look out for your, e look through your emails for um, any communications from the Amputee Coalition or from me, Priya. Um, my email is priya at amputee-coalition.org. Um, the Sometimes the emails go to spam. So if you miss something, uh, be sure to check there. We will be sending a uh, email out within the next two weeks for the upcoming May and July sessions that are both gonna be virtual. Um, we will also be sending out, hopefully within about a month or month and a half, an email about our in-person training sessions at National Conference. So if you haven't registered for conference yet, be sure to visit our website and register now so that you can um, take place for uh, take place for the virtual, I'm sorry, take place um, with us for the in-person uh, certification, as well as meet some new people, um, reconnect with old friends, and experience our first conference in two years. So it's going to be really, um, really fun in Desert Springs, California. So uh, be sure you register. And those who register for the national conference are actually going to start to receive additional information about the conference training classes. So they are um, exclusively for those that register for conference. So that's where there'll be more information and direct links relating to the um, August 10th um, in-person certified peer visitor training in Palm Desert, California. Um, and I wanted to share Ray Arpin. You've mentioned that you are an above knee amputee for 53 years and you're very active and it actually wasn't through doctors or physical therapists that helped you, but you've been playing sled hockey in your seventies and are now getting interested in hand cycling. So kudos to you for finding some ways to engage in um, adaptive athletics. I've heard a lot of um, people really getting involved in the sport of sled hockey. Um, we just had um, one of our volunteers um, who'd been doing sea kayaking as her hobby prior to her amputation and then wanting to return to that. And she never realized that there um, was a, that as a Paralympic sport. So you never know if you had a hobby before your amputation, if you want to get back involved in it. Um, there are fact sheets that have on, on our website that have a way to filter through adaptive sports. So this would help you learn about maybe some opportunities through local um, communities that are offering adaptive sports. Um, but just remember, you don't have to go from um, being an active athlete to all of a sudden feeling like you need to train for the train for a marathon. We can start slow and find the ways that are bringing you joy, getting you out off the um, off the couch out of the house and finding ways to stay active and mobile so that um, you're functionally strong and you're also engaging with other people with like-minded hobbies. And if there aren't any more questions, I don't see any more, um, know that we will send you some follow-up resources, but all of the information um, is available on our website. We did wanna make sure that we plugged in a lot of information in the chat, but if you did attend, um, this webinar, you will receive a follow-up email from us that contains some um, helpful links and resource flyers that you can save and learn more about ways to request a peer visit, become a certified peer visitor, join the Amputee Coalition's virtual support group meetings. If you have um, an interest in starting a support group, we do have support services there and um, tools to help new um, support group leaders actually lay a strong foundation and really help embrace um, community support in your area. And then again, if you have a connection to a hospital or rehab facility and you look on our website and don't see their name listed, I would be the point of contact to help facilitate providing information to your hospitals and rehab facilities about the benefits of becoming a healthcare facility partner. And that ultimately helps you get interconnected with their volunteer programs if you become a certified peer visitor and can help their patients. 
Uh, we do have one more question. Um, Sandra, we will circle back with you. I'm sure Priya will send you an email. Um, this is Sandra Davila, and we'll make sure that we let you know if the application was received on our end. Uh, please make note of the information listed here, as this is the best way to get in touch with the peer support department. Uh, if you have any questions, um, we are here to help. Um, thank you so much for joining us today.